Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're checking out a killer sounding ribbon microphone from the folks over at AEA Microphones in the United States. This is the AEA N22 Near Field Active Ribbon Microphone. The AEA can be used for vocals, acoustic guitar, electric guitar cabinets, drum overheads, kick drum, saxophone, brass, and just about everything else. Being that I'm an electric guitar player, this video will focus on how this works on an electric guitar amplifier cabinet. I'll run you through what makes this microphone special as well as give you plenty of audio samples both in an isolated fashion here in the studio as well in the context of a band mix. Before we get into it, a huge thank you to AEA for sending out this N22 Nearfield Active Ribbon Microphone for the review. I really appreciate it. If you want to check this out, I'll link it down in the description box below. Not only is this microphone built in the United States, it's very lightweight and comes complete with its very own padded carry case and microphone clip. The build quality is extremely solid overall considering just how light this microphone is. Over the last few weeks on the channel, I've been miking up my cabinets again here in the studio and for our live sessions which I've been posting on the channel and there's been a lot of positive feedback on the tone and the AEA N22 was the mic I've been using. Ribbon microphones are a go-to for electric guitarists for a few reasons. Ribbon mics have this sought after warmth and roundness to the sound that you won't find in something like a short SM57 or Sennheiser E906. Don't get me wrong, the Sennheiser E906 and Shaw SM57 are legendary, and I own both. These are legitimate ones. <laughs> but the character of a good ribbon microphone will definitely add a different dimension to your recorded tone. Most ribbon microphones I've tried over the years suffer from one of two issues. One, they either sound great when you pair them with a secondary microphone due to their inherent high-end frequency attenuation, and two, they usually require a lot of gain to get a strong signal. This is an active ribbon microphone, so it's really easy to drive. All you need to do is turn on phantom power on your desk or audio interface, and you'll be good to go. The AEA N22 microphone takes care of both of these issues that I just spoke of. It's designed to work as a standalone microphone in front of any guitar cab. This isn't your typical ribbon microphone because the N22 has an extended high-end frequency response, and it's active, which means you don't need an inline microphone preamp like an SE Dynamite Fethead or Cloud Lifter. Thanks to this microphone's 141 dB maximum sound pressure level, it can handle your favorite amp at gig volume, and I'll show you that in just a moment. To kick things off, let's hear how the AEA N22 sounds on my Fender Blues Deluxe Reissue amplifier on the Clean Channel up against the Sennheiser E906. My Blues Deluxe is loaded with an eminent Swamp Thing speaker. Thanks to this microphone's reduced proximity effect, I can keep the N22 close to the speaker without being overloaded with low end frequencies, as you might experience with other microphones like large diaphragm condenser mics. <laughs> While the N22, in my opinion, left the E906 for dead in those isolated samples, let's try them both together and see what kind of sounds we get. As you can hear, the N22 sounds full, rich, and round while having a nice detailed top end. Now, while I love the Sennheiser, on its own, it's a bit on the thin side. While the E906 is an iconic microphone, it really shines in combination with other mics that can kind of fill in the gaps in its frequency response. Let's try some dirty tones now through the same amplifier with some overdrive, thanks to the Royal Flush Dual Overdrive pedal and Buffalo FX Carrera OD. I've re eq the amp slightly to suit the Tokai Love Rock LS110 LP style electric guitar. It's made in Japan. It's great LP style electric, but it's still up at gig volume. Let's take a listen. <laughs> I 
I love how this microphone sounded on those heavy tones. If this was the only microphone you had in front of your cab, you're going to get great electric guitar tones, provided you start with a good tone to begin with. Now, the Sennheiser also sounded really good. In this particular situation, it sounded great. So what you're about to hear now is a quick pass using both microphones blended. <laughs> As you can hear, the blended tone didn't really add that much more to the sound over just having the N22 on its own. Sure, you can do different things once you start blending microphones, but as it stands on its own, this is a really great mic. Recording in an isolated fashion here in the studio is one thing, but the ultimate test is to hear how the microphone performs in the context of a band mix, and we'll also compare it up against the E906, yet again. And then we'll test the N22's off-axis rejection. Here we go. Sound is subjective, I'll let you decide which one you like the best and why. Comment below if you like one microphone over the other. To my ear, as a one and done microphone, this is pretty hard to beat. Let's talk about off axis to rejection. The AEA N22 has a figure eight polar pattern, which is really common for ribbon microphones. It's designed to accept sound evenly from the front and back while rejecting sound from both sides. Say for example, you're playing live in a room. If you position your amp correctly and you work within the polar pattern of the microphone, you can really help eliminate most of the audio spill. Figure eight polar patterns are common for ribbon microphones in a room with drums and bass, it did a great job at isolating the tone of the amp. Let's have a quick listen. After listening back, I thought this did a really great job at isolating the guitar cab. You could still hear the other instruments in the room to some degree, but not as much as I thought. Now, if you want the ultimate in off-axis rejection, a dynamic microphone generally has a really tight polar pattern and a much smaller capsule, but the tone of this really sounded great. Let's wrap this video up. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on the AEA N22 microphone. This has completely surpassed my expectations. It's the only microphone I would use on its own for studio recording, where I wanted to take the complication out of a multi-microphone setup. Sure, you can pair it with another microphone if you need to, but thanks to that extended high-end response, you don't need a secondary microphone. But again, if you wanna do that, it's up to you. I also love the fact that I don't need an inline microphone preamp that gives you 28 extra dB of gain to drive this particular mic. Any sound card or audio interface will do the job. This microphone sounds great, and if you're unfamiliar with ribbon microphones, they can stretch a small fortune. And considering the kind of sound I'm getting out of this, I would have no hesitations recommending it for the price that it's listed at. A massive thanks again to AEA for sending out this ribbon mic for the review. I really appreciate it. You can check it out using the links in the description below. Let me know what you think of the audio quality of this microphone, and I hope it was helpful. This video took ages to put together. Please leave a thumbs up, and I will catch you soon. See ya.